Let us look at this tool called ValGrind, which is used to discover memory errors and memory leaks in the code. It allows us to identify where in the code we have memory errors. That means we may be writing beyond a valid memory or reading some uninitialized variables or any error related to memory. It could be a double free also. Anywhere we violate the sanctity of the memory, reading uninitialized memory or writing in area which doesn't belong to allocated stuff, double frames. If you have an array going beyond the valid array, beyond stack read. So all those are memory errors and memory leak is like when you allocate memory and forget to free it. So if you do PTR equal to malloc and then some way later you say PTR equal to something else. So now that malloc block is no more referenceable, so it is leaked. So how do we use valgrind? Basically the only thing while compiling you need to add this option minus g. So when you do that minus g in the executable we get little more rich symbolic information which valgrind uses. By the way it's the same information with gdb the debugger also requires. And how do you run it? You can run it just like that. You can say valgrind space dot slash a dot out or whatever application name. And it will show the memory errors. If you are interested in leaks also, then you need to little bit have a expanded options tool equal to mem check, leak check equal to full. So normally almost always we are interested in both leaks as well as errors. So you, we can do like that. So let's now see some code and let's run Valgrind on it and let's see how it goes. Okay. And if you go to Valgrind, you will find the example codes. Let's look at this simple code. Uh, had a cast type PTR and we directly copied some stuff into it. So that's a clear memory error. We never allocated memory dynamically using malloc or we did make this PTR a array also, array of character. That's an error and let's see whether Valgrind is able to catch it or not. We will compile using minus G and minus W or anyway should be used. Now we run Valgrind. These are the options and I run. And it runs. So how Valgrind behaves is that when you run this command, Valgrind process closely checks what's happening inside the A dot out. It checks all the memory accesses and if something goes wrong, it gives a report. So it has given two errors now. This is one error and this is another error. So let's see. So it is saying at line number nine, we are using uninitialized value of size eight. That is correct. This PTR, which is a eight byte address in my machine, it is uninitialized. Then it is saying invalid write of size four at line number nine. Here we are doing invalid write. We are writing this hello, but where are we writing in an invalid area? It's an invalid write. Invalid write means writing into area which is not valid. And it gives some further hints that the area where I am writing is neither coming from the stack nor malloc nor recently freed. Because Valgrind attempts that when it says that a block is mistreated. So it tries to find out whether it was earlier freed, whether it's a stack address. It tries to give a hint, but here it's unable to relate that from where that address is coming. Of course, it cannot find because it is garbage value, but you get ample information and you can fix the bug. This is well one.c. We have a pointer. We allocate memory. We print the first element. So that's problematic here. Line number 13. We are reading something which is not initialized. Then we are not freeing it also. Let's run it and see. Run well grind. So conditional jump or move depends on uninitialized variables and it happens in this function. This function is library internal, we don't know. Which was called from printf, we don't know that implementation also. Which was called from this point, line number 13. This is where we know. So line 13 we call printf, which internally used some uninitialized values. So naturally we will suspect whatever we passed. Already we knew that PTR0 is not initialized. So we are getting that uninitialized values. And again, line number 13, you get the same thing again. It happens while grind often for one error. It kind of repeats it. It is saying definitely lost in this case. Actually, there are three definitely lost and possibly lost and still reachable. A even clearer case of loss happens when you do something like this. Let's say you do PTR equal to null. As soon as the code reaches line number 15, Valgrind would be sure that this block is 
lead because there is no pointer referring to that block. So let's just do this also. Let's test it. Run. It, it finds just the same things and leak is the same. Let's try to fix these errors and see that they actually go away. So what I will do is I will set PTR 0 to 100 and instead of doing PTR equal to null, I will finally free it. Okay. So let's also see that in the correct code, Valgrind is happy. Let's see if Valgrind is satisfied. We run. And this is the clean output we always aim for. You should be able to say n allocs and n freeze, and you are seeing no errors. So let's see the other files quickly, val2.c. After freeing, we are accessing it. Line number 14 is a problem. Let's run. So it is saying invalid read of size 4, and the address which was being mistreated is inside a block of size 400 freed, already freed at line 13. So the address belonged to a block which was freed at line 13. Uh, and even it says that the block was allocated at line 11, which is true, line 11. And invalid read happened at this line. So what it is saying is invalid read, it happened at line 15, which is that printf. Invalid read happened here. And it is saying that it was freed here and it was allocated here. So basically, what it does is that whatever goes wrong, it tries to give ample hints about which block was it freed, where was it allocated. So it gives a good context of what's happening and then you can fix the bug. L let's see well 3 c So we are freeing something which is never allocated, freeing memory which is not coming from heap, right? So line number 16, we expect something to happen. Normally when we do such blenders, the code crashes and then of course you can understand run it in gdb and you can do backtrace and find out or you can simply run in valgrind and valgrind will do its best to tell you certain memory errors as they occurred so we run it in valgrind and it says invalid free delete at line 16 and this address is on stack so it, it is able to find out that it is coming from the stack now let's see the next one well for we are freeing and freeing so double free so it will be invalid free and it will be able to say that it's already freed here that will be the out let me run it in well grind so it says invalid free at line 16 that's correct and it is saying this address is in a block which is freed at line 14 that is also correct at 14 we freed it which and it goes further that the block who was freed at line 14 was allocated at line 12 so that's also correct okay let's see the next one well 5.c so we do malloc and then we do malloc here so as soon as the code comes here this block is leaked and then we free uh, that's okay this one is freed so max lm is 100 so this 400 bytes and that's 800 bytes so this block of 400 bytes we should see as leaked let's run and that's a leak and you can see that 400 bytes okay so you can be sure that we are talking about this block not this block that basically concludes valgrind i highly recommend that whenever you do dynamic memory allocation or maybe static arrays also but you are playing with pointers and you are accessing uh, here and there the data. It's always good to run it through Elkrain because sometimes the code works correctly, but there are memory errors because memory errors are unpredictable. It may work correctly in the lab and it may crash suddenly in the customer site. So always make sure that if you are doing any substantial pointer or dynamic memory or string related thing, uh, please run it through Elkrain.